Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Afternoon here at the Pace Studios in New York City. We are very lucky today to be joined uh, by Jerry Douglas and bass player Daniel Kimbrough from the Jerry Douglas Band. Um, guys, thanks for coming in and playing for us today here in New York. We would have been more if our bus hadn't uh, had some issues. Yeah, you know, I was going to mention that and sort of stumbled into it. But yes, there were, there were initially more of you coming, and uh, this is what made it. So we're glad that you were able to get yourself here uh, yep. from the breakdown. Well, we're, we're seven, seven down to two. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what, uh, what uh, fraction that really creates. but Yeah, we're all wondering we how you're going to pull this off. Yeah, well, <laughs> we. don't worry about that too much longer. <laughs> so uh, you guys got a, a new record that's coming out uh, next month. It's called What If. Uh, you're going to play a couple songs from that record uh, and yep. I think one other one. But uh, tell us what you're going to start off with today. We're, we're going to uh, play you uh, uh, a song called Hey Joe that everybody thinks of as a Jimi Hendrix tune, but was actually recorded by a lot of people. And, and written by some fellows who I've never heard the original version of the fellows that cut it and it can't, their names don't float to the top right now but uh, uh, Jimmy did it very slow hey Joe you know really slow and my version is the opposite of that <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I cut this a few years ago with Tim O'Brien a great uh, great bluegrass and Celtic singer and uh and with a with a guitar player named Artie McGlynn, who's a who's a, just a steamroller of an Irish Celtic guitar player, who just in a, you know, he did exactly that. And this time we cut it completely different with horns, whole rhythm section, everything. It's it's a uh, you know they're nothing they're nothing they're not really alike. But, yeah. Uh, I just like the song, and uh, here is another completely different version. <laughs> right now for you. Yeah. Take it away. Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. That sounds great. Even two sevenths. Amazing. <laughs> two sevenths of that song. Two well, sevenths. You just heard it. One hundred percent of two sevenths of the song. <laughs> so uh, this album uh, is—it's uh, sort of an unusual one for you. Uh, you've played on, I think, if I'm if I'm getting this correct, you've played on one million albums in your career. <laughs> somewhere, just somewhere under in, that, a million, in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but on this one, it's sort of uh, with the full band. You got a horn section. Uh, you got you know a lot of uh, different instrumentation than you might normally have, uh, and it really incorporates a lot of jazz and bebop into a kind of country bluegrass framework. So you know, after all these years, all these projects, what, it's great what, to hear somebody uh, actually uh, fr frame it up right. Yeah. Oh well, nice. uh, you know, I try to do my research. You know. <laughs> um, so how'd you get to this point? What 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 led you to this project right right now? Well, you know, I grew up playing bluegrass music and played in bluegrass bands forever and pretty much made my name in the bluegrass music genre. But uh, the whole time I was listening to other things. I mean, and because I'm a dobro player, I didn't have a lot of people to listen to to get ideas from. So I listened to other, other instruments, electric guitar players. Eric Clapton was a huge... Uh, had a huge uh, impact on me, and so did Jimi Hendrix, and and uh, you know, all these people like that saxophone players. I got it wherever I could get it. You know, I I'd listen to other things because there were only like three dobro players that I could get things from, and uh, so I I grew up listening to everything and got into Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli, and then one day. A friend of mine introduced me to Chick Corea and Weather Report at the same on the same day within the same hour, and my mind was just completely blown. Uh, and after that, I thought, you know, there's no reason that all of these things I can't make all of these things fit together somehow. And I think this record is sort of the culmination of that. I've been trying and swinging and missing for a few years, you know, trying to bring elements of all of those things into one record, but because of, because of the musicians, because of Daniel and uh, my drummer, Doug Belote, and, and Mike Seal, the guitar player, uh, Christ, uh, Christian Settlemeyer, and then the horn section, Jamel uh, Mitchell and Vance Thompson. And it just, those guys and their personalities, they are this record mm -hmm. as much as I am. I just kind of scribbled down and got some rec some some songs together, the semblance of some songs, and then threw them to those guys. It was like a, a, a feeding frenzy, and uh, the record is what we came out with. So it's a, it's a mixture of all these different kinds of music in there, and they are predominantly jazz musicians. So therein lies the there you go where that came from. Yeah, um, and I, I mean I've I've heard you say that you've you've wanted to put horns on your records before, but you always sort of wound up putting other instruments where those horns might have gone. Yeah, I I wasn't sure if I could get away with it with my audience, you know, whether they would just sell me out and go, yeah, he's done. <laughs> uh, but I just kind of got to the point where it wasn't that I didn't care; it was just that I had to do it, you know. To, I I had to go ahead and do that. Yeah. And I love it. You know, I, I was always uh, replacing those horn sections that I was hearing in my head with different, you know, violin sections, basses, you know, all kinds of things. But uh, then I ran into these guys who could really, could pull it off, you know, could really get the, the sound that I was imagining out there into the air. And uh, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. So uh, tell us about the uh, the next song you're going to do from us for us from the album. Uh, the next song we're going to do is uh, I'm a Tom Waits fan. And you don't have to be exactly in tune to play a Tom Waits song, but it helps. But. Uh, I, a couple couple years ago, I was out on the road with uh, Allison Krauss, and we were doing, you know, just uh, <laughs> it was like Groundhog Day. Okay, it was like we were playing indoor uh, at these theaters that were. It was sort of like, you know, my dressing room was in the same place every day, every, and I got this Tom Waits uh, box set, uh, and on this record, it was all of these things that he had, some of them he had cut, some of them he had discarded, 
but uh, this this song 219 jumped out at me. A lot of them jumped out at me, but I'm not going to do a whole record of Tom Waits songs. But I'm a huge fan. And he and I met a long time ago when he was opening up for a band I was playing in called The Country Gentleman in 1973 at the Cellar Door in Washington, D.C. And I, he probably doesn't remember that at all, but I remember hanging out with him outside. I was trying to learn how to smoke, and he definitely knew how. <laughs> and so I was watching him. And, and, he, and I watched his show that night, and I just thought, this guy's a genius, and I still think he's a genius. And, but w this song is one of his, and um, so we're, we'll do a little bit of this. And uh, it's on the new record, also with a great big band with horns and all these kind of things and big booms and all kinds of things going on, but we'll be, we'll be out there. We're going to swing for the, we're, we're swinging for the, for the, uh, the the big the the, the far away seats for the walls right here on this one. So. <laughs> The barn was buried neath a mile of mud Now I got nothing but the whistle and the steam My baby's leaving on the 219 Well, there's a fella that's preaching bad hell and damnation Bouncing off the walls of Grand Central Station I treated her bad, I treated her mean My baby's leaving on the 219 I said, hey, hey, remember you, hey I don't know what to do, hey, hey, I will remember you, my baby's leaving on the 219. <laughs> I sent her out for a bottle, but when she came back inside She didn't have my whiskey, she didn't have my gin A hat full of feathers and a crooked grin I said, hey, hey, oh, remember you, hey, hey I will remember you, hey, hey I don't know what to do, my baby's leaving on the 219, Daniel As you get farther away The roar cause of everything you wanted to say Was that a raindrop or a tear in your eye Were you drying your nails or waving goodbye I said hey, hey, I don't remember you Hey, hey, I will remember you Hey, hey, I will remember you My baby's leaving on the 219 I said hey I will remember you, hey, hey, I don't know what to do, hey, hey, I will remember you, my baby's leaving on the 219. Thank you guys. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> How are you feeling about it? I'm feeling good about it. I need a 
well, you know, we don't really need those guys. <laughs> That's what yeah, I've been saying just, for years. You know, we can leave them in that bus behind. wherever they are right now. We can do the rest of these this whole <laughs> tour, and we'll be fine. So, you know, since it's more in the spotlight even than it would have been before, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the Dobro and, you know, Resonators. Mm, um, yeah. Because I think you're the first, you know, strictly Dobro player we've had in, in my memory, um, at least recently. And I guess that's good. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I mean, and after <laughs> this, I don't know how we're going to have any others. Oh, sure you will. Um, but, uh, you know, so just as like, you know, our, our readers are, you know, lovers of all kinds of music. So, you know, the idea of the Dobro, you know, it obviously looks like a conventional guitar. It's got six strings. It looks like a guitar. Did you start out as a Dobro player? Did you start out as a guitar player and, and make the transition? How did, how did you sort of become the player that you are? Well, I, I started, I've played something all my life. My earliest memories were like beating on a ukulele. I, I had a fiddle and I fell on it. And, and uh, that was the end of that. that sounds like a country it's a song. Good, <laughs> it's a good thing that I fell on it, actually. But uh, there are plenty of good fiddle players out there. But uh, I started playing guitar. Got a guitar for Christmas one year. And then I went to see Flatten Scruggs. My father took me to see Flatten Scruggs. And they had a, a, a dobro player named josh graves and just seeing the thing I mean it's an it, you know it was obviously an, an art deco uh instrument yeah built in those days the first dobros were built around 1928 and um there was this hawaiian guitar craze going on in the 20s and you could you could get a guitar for free but you had to pay a dollar a week for the lesson <laughs> and uh, i doubt if many kids went ahead and took the lesson but yeah. and but there aren't many of those guitars out there anymore. But Dobros uh, were created by these uh, Slovakian brothers who uh, immigrated to to Los Angeles. It's crazy as it, as they do. It's a nut. Yeah, that old chestnut. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so these so these guitars were sort of created out of that Hawaiian music craze. But these guys liked louder music, louder. So they created the. The cone and the, all that, that hold, everything that holds it, and uh, put the cover plate on the top and all this stuff. Right. And um, just really got everything right the first time, I mean, as far as I know. And um, they, they became instruments for all kinds of music. So a lot of uh, blues players used them because they were loud enough to really accompany their voice because the sound systems didn't exist you yeah, know, in right, the 30s, right. 20s, 30s. But... Um, I started playing it when I was about 10 or 11 years old after seeing Josh Graves play. And uh, I, f I play a lot of other instruments, but this is, this is what I love. You know, it's the sound of this guitar that made me really want to become a musician. And it's all I've ever done. Was and, so, yeah, and so you sort of, you, that's what you play exclusively as, mm -hmm. you know, in your, in your career all these, all these years. Slide, slide stuff. Yeah, I played a, a lot of lap steel now, and, and but predominantly dobro. Yeah, and uh, that's what I'm known for doing, and that's just fine with me. Yeah, uh, you know, you've got you've got this bar for for intonation and making and creating your notes instead of using your fingers because the strings are pretty, the strings are high, you know, up off the neck and. So you have to use a slide. Right. An open tune, if I'm not. Is that right? I've got an, I've got an open tuning. I'm in D right now. Right. And I've got yeah. this thing that I can go. Uh -huh. So it gives me two tunings on one guitar. So yeah, that's cool. Hip shot thing. So I think I think the, the last song I'm going to do for us today is also one that you're sort of known for. You've been doing a lot of years. Uh, it's a version, or at least a part of a version, of an old Allman Brothers song. But why don't you why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's a it's 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 a it's three or four different songs. Uh, the first song is called "A Tribute to Pether O'Donnell." It's one I've been playing for years. It was written by a guy, a guy in Ireland, Donald Lunny, who's a re really famous Irish musician. And uh, then there's that song, and then there's another song I wrote called. Uh, <laughs> Uh, row row and uh, I met I met this kid my my son Patrick was going to high school with this with this kid who uh, wanted to be a rapper and his but his name was Pierre McDonald and, and so he changed his name to Lil row row in front of me so I, I ripped I ripped that name off right away you don't let stuff like that get by you so uh, there's that song and then and then there's the uh, the the Dwayne Allman tune uh, uh, Little Martha. Right. So play that. 
that one. And thanks for having us here today. It's been a pleasure playing. Yeah.
That is amazing. So, uh, Jerry, your new record with the Jerry Douglas Band, the first album by the Jerry Douglas Band, I think that's right. Correct. Yeah, uh, is out August 18th. Uh, it's called What If. It's on Rounder Records. That's right. Uh, so, thank you so much for uh, coming and, and playing the Dobro for us today. And oh, it was a come pleasure. on back when you have the rest of the guys, and oh. we'll see if we can fit them in. <laughs> it would have been great to have them all here, and uh, we will come back. We'll do it again. Great. Great to have you. Thanks. <laughs>